So we left off yesterday. We were talking about the fact that um, we know that vectors always have direction. And we were talking about how to describe um, the angle, all right? If you're going to use cardinal directions, if you're going to use north, south, east, and west, um, then you have to be very specific about how you describe this angle here, all right? Someone yesterday said, well, can I say that's just going northeast? And it is going northeast, but it's going a very specific way northeast, okay? Um, it's going 23 degrees, and it's going north of east. So if I was going to describe this vector, if I was going to write down my answer, I would say that this vector was 42 meters per second uh, at 23 degrees Uh and we said that's north of east, all right? Now, there's a reason why I said it that way. It's because if I'm traveling down this line, if I'm traveling down this line, that would be east. Everybody, Everybody's with me on that, right? Thumbs up with the emoticon or someone say yeah. Okay, nice, thumbs up. All right, so, okay. <laughs> so I, I'm going east if I go down this line. Now, I need to turn north of that, and I need to turn 23 degrees north of that in order for this, for this line to appear in the right spot. Now, there's another way that I could actually describe this vector. Instead of saying that it's 23 degrees north of east, couldn't, couldn't I draw this vector out like this? So if this is 23 degrees, I, I can make a right angle here. This would be 67 degrees. Everybody sees that, right? Well, it's the same vector, um, but I'm going to describe it slightly differently. I'm going to say 42 meters per second at 23 degrees and this time I'm going to say east of north oh wait I didn't mean to say 23 degrees I meant to say 67 sorry about that uh, and this time I'm going to say east and north now so if I was going down this line I would be going north but I have to turn 67 degrees east of that in order to travel this line. So this vector, this vector, obviously they're exactly the same vector, okay, but I could describe it um, as being 23 degrees north of east, or I could describe it as being 67 degrees east and north. Now, this is probably how people get hung up the most, right, on these problems. Um, if you get confused, in the in the document, I'll pull that up. So if we go to our document here, we go to courses, physics honors, and our uh, agenda. I put a link to a video that Mr. Hammond made that, that explains exactly what I'm talking about right now. All right, so if you're, con if you're still confused, go and look at that video. Um, I have another video, for some reason I didn't put the link, where Mr. Hammond actually talks about exactly what we're doing today um, with our components as well. So if, if you want to hear somebody else say it, you can listen to his video too, all right? So this is how we would describe these vectors. Now I'm going to go to my next slide. So here's, here's my problem. I have a hiker and they're walking 80 meters north. Then they're walking 55 meters at 25 degrees east of north. Um, what is his displacement? So I'm gonna draw out what that would look like. I'm going to grab, um, gonna grab a line, I'll make it blue. 
just so it'll be easier. So let's say that this, we'll make it fatter too. Um, let's say that this uh, is our vector for 80, for the 80 meters, right? Uh, then I have the 55 meters. So I would draw my second vector Make it blue again. And fatter again. So I'll have my second vector, and it's going 25 degrees east of north. So that like might be like that. Okay. So those are my two vectors. Now, how did I know to put it here? Well, 25 degrees east of north. That means that I was going north and I had to turn 25 degrees east of that. Um, so now when I go to find my when I go to find my resultant, I have a I have a slight problem here. If I want to find this mathematically, that's gonna be really hard math. Because that is not this is not a right triangle, right? So I can't use Sokotoa. Um, if I did it graphically and I drew it really carefully, I could I could solve it. But you know, I want I want to use math. I want to use my calculator. So I have to figure out a way that I could turn this into a right triangle. Now, I'm going to show you something right here. I'll just draw it out. If I, if I could figure out, if I could figure out what this X part here would be and what this Y part here would be, then I could make that a right triangle. My lines are a little bit pathetic, but you know, let's pretend that they're straight here. So this could be a right triangle. Now, what I would have to do then is I would have to figure out, well, what are the Y parts of these two vectors? Add them together. Then I would have to figure out what are the X parts of these two vectors? Add them together. And I would have one X and one Y, and then I would have a right triangle and I could figure out that hypotenuse. So this is what we mean when we say that uh, we're going to find the vector components. The vector components are the X, the part of the vector that's in the X direction, and then the part of the vector that's in the Y direction. And we would do that because if I have, I, I might have a problem maybe that had four, five, six of these vectors pointing in all different directions. So I would want to be able to find the X parts of all of them, the Y parts of all of them, add up the X's and Y's and get one right triangle. So here's how this would work. Um, I'm going to, I want to figure out the X part of both vectors and the y part of both vectors. Now for vector number one, this is pretty easy. Uh, vector number one, it says he's walking 80 meters north. How far does he go in the x direction? Somebody shout it out. Or type it in the chat, I guess. No, not quite. So we're, we're just looking at this one here. So we're looking at 80 meters north. So just this one. So how far is he walking in the X direction? I'll give you a hint. It starts with a Z. Or zero, right? He's not walking in the X. He's walking straight up in the Y. So the X part of that vector would be zero. The Y part of that vector is going to be 80. All right, so it'll be 80 meters. Now for this one, this one that's coming out here, he does, he is walking out into the X direction. And he is walking out, here we'll do these in yellow. So he is walking out in the X direction and he's also walking up in the Y direction. How would I find this? Well, I could use trig. Right. If I to in order to use trig, you guys, and I'm making a little bit of a mess here, so I'm gonna I'm gonna erase 
all my crazy lines. Uh, when I use trig, I'm, I'm just going to take this vector, I'm going to move it back down to the origin here for a second, because it doesn't matter. Now, this angle here is 25. I always want to take the angle with respect to the x-axis, because it's just going to make things easier for me. I'll show you why in a second. So if this one is 25, that means that this angle, oh, I don't want yellow. That means that this angle right here, this is going to be 65. Okay, and what I want to do is I want to find out what is the x part of this and what is the y part. So what's the x part right there and what's the y part here? If this angle right there is 65 degrees. Well, we have Sokotoa, right? Uh, <laughs> we have Sokotoa. So sine is the opposite um, over the hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? Because that's the ka. So if I wanted to find, if I wanted to find this x piece, and I know this angle that's touching the x, that means it's the adjacent side, right? So for x, I'm always going to use cosine, all right? The x part of the vector is going to be equal to the hypotenuse, which is the original vector, times the cosine of the angle. And I was supposed to get something that would make it easier to write yesterday, but it hasn't arrived yet. So hopefully by Tuesday, uh, the writing will be much better. So the x part, the x parts of the vectors are always going to be the hypotenuse times the cosine of the angle. The y part, that's the opposite side. So the y part is always going to be the hypotenuse, which is the original vector, times the sine of the angle. So for this x, for the x piece of this uh, vector, I'm going to say that that is 55 times the uh, cosine of 65, because I'm always going to use the angle that touches the x-axis. And then for the y part, that'll be 55 times the sine of 65. All right. So um, I don't know if you guys have your uh, super fancy calculators. I, I don't. I still don't know how to get the trig functions on there. <laughs> if you have the calculators from last year, there's a trig button and you have to go through, or if you have a graphing calculator, a uh, solar calculator, that should be easy. Um, but on my cell phone, I'm gonna type in 65, I hit cosine, and then I times that by 55, and I get 23.2. So I get this to equal 23.2. 23.2. And then for over here, I'm going to do the same, 65, get the sine of that, oops, 65, do the sine of that, times that by 55, and I get um, 49.8. Did everyone get the same answer as me? Yeah, okay. So then I would just add these up. So the x part is 0 plus 23.2. That would be 23.2. The y part would be 80 plus 49.8. So that would be 129.8. So now going back, going back here, right? Uh, what, we're, what we just figured out is we just figured out how to make this a right triangle so that we could do that hypotenuse, okay? We know
Okay, we know that the x part of that vector that comes out here Oops. So we know the x part of that vector that comes out here, we know that's 23.2. And then we know the y that comes up, that that is going to be 129. Uh, 129.6. Oops. Okay, so this is 129.6, this is 23.2. I'll even, I'll label them. So I know that's 23.2. I know this is 129.6. So now, finding the hypotenuse, this is gonna be easy. Everybody knows how to do this. To find the length of it, I'll use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that would be 23.2 squared plus 129.6 squared, oops, equals c squared. Uh, add those together, take the square root. Can someone tell me what that is? One thirty six point seven. Oh, no, that's fine. One thirty one point seven. Point seven. Yeah, yeah, I would. Just round to the tenths place. So this is 131.7, so that is how far I actually ended up from where I started. And then the angle, you guys, um, you could use whatever trig function you want. What do you guys like, sine, cosine, tangent? I'll find this angle right there. Sine, okay, so sine is the opposite side, this side, over the hypotenuse. So what I would do is I would do the sine of the angle is going to equal the opposite side, which is 129.6, over the hypotenuse, which is 131.7, Put that in your calculator, do the inverse sine, and you'll get that the angle equals, does anybody have it? I got it to be 79.8. Did everybody get the same? Okay. So 79.8 degrees, and then because I found this angle right here, right, that is going to be north of the east direction. So I was walking east, I turned north of that. So 79.8 degrees north of east. So this is, this is how you break vectors down into their x and y pieces and, and create one right triangle so that you could solve for that resultant. This is actually easier than the other math that you would have to do.